Good afternoon, folks. How are you? It's Swaino again. Did you miss me? I missed you. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. It is one o'clock. Now, today I thought um, if you watched my uh, Cook and Dance episode, the pilot, you might have made Piccadillo. And if you haven't, I suggest you do because uh, it worked out really well. It was beautiful, actually. Nice combination of flavours. So, um, Piccadillo can be used for a number of things. And I did mention that it can be used for soft tacos or you just have it with rice. Um, but if you've got some left, we have to make empanadas. Yes. So, uh, I'm just going to first um, show you the, a really basic dough recipe. And, you know, recipes are out there. They're everywhere. But this is the one that I do. And you can do it, you know with your eyes shut. Oh, hang on. All right, so in here we're gonna have one and a half cups of flour. I'll just put some aside for the bringing together. Anyway, okay, one and a half cups of flour. I've halved this recipe because it's only, I've only got about this much of the picadillo left, so it's not gonna make a great deal of pastries. Um, so I only need enough for um, the boys basically um, and me if there's uh, one left over so butter um, it's good to use butter it's awesome you know uh, it's wholesome it's good for you a few fats and oils but anyway it's um you know much way 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 better than margarine so on here you need about for for one and a half cups of flour, you need about um, 80 grams or so of butter. So on here, if you don't know this already, on the butter packet, there's always these little, see these little lines? And then they represent 100 grams, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. So they're really handy little markers if you don't want to measure stuff. You just use that. So... You know, you go, oh yeah, okay, about 100. Well, I want a bit less than that. So I sort of usually mark it about there. Open up the packet and you go, I reckon 80 grams, 85 grams or so is about there if I can cut in a straight line. When you're making dough, your butter should be quite cold. Um, I'll show you why in a sec. So then you just cut your butter into cubes. I think this looks a bit less than um, 85 grams, but it doesn't really matter. That's going to be my hashtag, isn't it? It doesn't really matter. And it doesn't because, you know, you're just making a pastry. If there's less butter than normal, well, it's not going to be so flaky pastry, buttery pastry sort of vibe, is it? It's going to be more flour and water, which is your basic pastry anyway. So, you know you choose your own adventure okay so in there i've got flour and the butter and you just put in your crumb uh, your cubes of butter right you know with cooking it should be a bit of give and take i think otherwise you're stuck you're stuck you know like you should be able to choose a little bit there should be freedom to move in a recipe any recipe I think, well, okay, there might be certain things that require absolute precision, but I don't usually go there. <laughs> okay, so now um, I'm trying to show you, you just basically um, crumb them in, which involves just picking up the little bits of butter, squeezing them into your flour so in the end you've got a um well you know you read every recipe it says it should resemble fine breadcrumbs mine never resembles fine breadcrumbs i can tell you mine <laughs> resembles like lumps of butter in flour but that's okay too because the lumps of butter, if you do have big lumps in there, actually um, helps 
for the for the flakiness of the pastry like when it rises because you've got the fats in there it sort of goes um it probably cooks at a high uh, oh i don't even know how to explain it i don't <laughs> i don't i really don't anyway look trust me it doesn't matter if you've got big lumps of butter in your flour it's okay but you really want to get most of it <coughs> that's a bad angle really big lumps out okay all right so once you get to that stage then we're going to put in some cold water oh no no we're not we're going to put in an egg first this is like an egg dose this is quite a rich yummy dough <coughs> oh, i didn't bring a spoon out okay Use your hand. You're going to use your hand anyway. Well, we have been using our hands, so that's okay. Oh, I've been, I'm breathing in flour. Oh, gosh, hang on, let me move that. Okay, is that better? No? No. All right. A bit of water to bring it all together into a dough. I didn't bring any extra flour out with me, so I'm hoping this is going to work. I didn't measure that either. But it's, you just need enough um, water to bring the dough together. So, mine is coming together. Yep, it's okay. It's okay. You, just, you don't need much. You just need like a little... Okay, so once that's like that, God, I'm just going to put it very gently, and you want to be very gentle with the dough. Put it onto whatever, a board, plate, and you just want to bring it together gently. We're not kneading this because we want the dough, the butter to stay in little clumps. It'll add to the, the rise and the flakiness of your pastry. When I mean rise, I mean the, the little pockets of oil. Ah, um, oh, someone out there, help me. I know what I mean. <laughs> I should probably research what I'm going to say before I start filming but hey no i'm not going to do that this is going to be all natural um okay so there you just make sure it's sort of just all you could knead it very gently very gently make sure it's all just sticking together and now you just make a little circle of it like that and you put it into your fridge to rest because that's what you do with dough and baking and stuff you need to rest this dough um, because it's got the, you want it to um, firm up a bit it just makes it easier to roll out when we get to that stage okay I'll be back in a sec okay welcome back my dough has been resting in my fridge for about half an hour um, well, I put it in the deep freeze to uh, speed things along a bit. I'm going to dust this board with flour. Put my dough onto it. Just give it a bit of a coat. I find that always works well. Got a uh, substantial rolling pin here. I'm also going to give that a bit of a dust. And then I'm going to roll out my dough without wobbling the camera. And um, oh, it's really nice. Beautiful dough. Beautiful. Okay, so we're going to get to there and just, I'll just stop there. And um, I've just got a little thing to cut out a circle with. You might need to do it with a knife if you haven't got something round lying around I'm sure you have you cut out your little circles okay 
I might just uh, cut. Hmm? I'll just cut here and we'll um, get the filling out. Okay, so I've just um, gotten the, the little round of dough and I've <clears throat> just flattened it out a little bit more with a rolling pin. This is uh, the leftovers from the Piccadillo the other night. Um, so I'm just going to get spoon of that. You could actually mix in the rice as well. You know, use everything. Put it into your little epanada, little pastry um, to seal the edges. You can use egg or water or milk. Um, I'm going to use egg because I'm also going to brush the top of them with egg so you get it nice and get them nice and golden. Um, milk works just as well for getting a golden um, sheen on your pastries when you're baking. You just need um, because milk has uh, a fat fats in it. So. All right, and then I'm just going to fold over. And you could just go like that. Um, you can curl the edges for that typical empanada look, which, you know, I'm not too crash hot on. <laughs> I can never make stuff look amazing like some people can, you know. I think you either got it or you haven't when it comes to um, decorative touches. <laughs> Mine is, I call my food uh, rustic. Rustic. Tasty and rustic. All right, so, oh, there we go. There's my tasty and rustic empanada, number one. Brush with egg on top. Put onto a tray with um, a baking paper so it doesn't stick or just put on a tray, um, baking tray, and it goes into an oven um, at uh, 180 for 20 minutes. Let's go with that. But they just need to brown up because don't forget your filling is already cooked, so you don't need to cook any raw meat inside this pastry. You just need to sort of heat it through. Um, and you need to cook your pastry so um, I would say 180 you could go a bit higher than that if you wanted to 190 but maybe you know 15 20 minutes and just see how they look um, they should look nice and golden brown um, and uh, we'll see how we go and uh, good luck with that um, over and out I might just put a picture of how mine turned out um, in the comments below like this recipe um just can you subscribe and hit the bell and you'll get notifications of the next one all right over and out folks bye yumbo yeah they turned out it's empanada time arriba